Lions are back. I want to give you a deal. Demon, demon the yeah. challenge is you talk too much. Sorry. Bada, 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 bada. I'm about to get up and shake your hand at 38. For 37, I'll come to you. <laughs> Returning to the heat of the den are technopreneur and serial investor Chris Senanu. Publishing and PR media mogul Olive Gashara. Entertainment magnate and founder of the multinational homeboys group Mike Rabar. Manufacturing dynamo, serial entrepreneur and seasoned investor Darshan Chandaria. And queen of enterprise and marketing Joanne Mwangi, who is ready for battle and not afraid of the competition. You know, Dashan thinks he's the only guy who has money in the world, huh? Eh? Us guys, we are throwing in strategy. I'll make a counter offer, but I think this is the level at which we'll Make the with. offer, guy. <laughs> the Lions are ready to invest, but only if the deal is right. I always say all dreams are valid, but fantasies are not. You value the business quite high. I think your valuation is really putting me off. So where did you get that figure from? You just guessed. Yeah. Obviously, you're like a mad scientist, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and for the entrepreneurs facing them, this will be the toughest business pitch of their lives. From the minute you walked in, you had me. And, and you're selling happiness. <laughs> what more do you want? So which lion will be the hungriest and clench the best deal tonight? Wow, what a season this has been so far. Many budding entrepreneurs have come into the den and secured the deal of a lifetime. This is KCB Lions Den, Kenya's premier business TV series. Tonight, the Lions are confronted by a platform designed to help dairy farmers meet the rising demand, a technology academy that aims to cultivate and nurture the spirit of Silicon Valley in Africa, a handmade jewelry company, and a fleet management solution for corporate motorbikes. But first in the den is an entrepreneur with a business that's sure to add something special and unique to your party, wedding, or corporate event. Nyambura, welcome to KCP Lions Den. Thank you. Now you're seconds away from facing the lions, so let me ask you, what's going through your mind right now? Right now, like, my heart is racing, um, but I'm hopeful that um, I'll be able to articulate myself and I'll be able to really sell my product because I love it and I really believe in it. Hello Lions, my name is Nyambura Kenyori and I'm a marketing communications professional turned entrepreneur. I run Picha Booth, a photo booth company based here in Nairobi, Kenya. I'm here for an ask of one million investment for a 30% stake in the business. We've all gone through weddings and they can be a little bit routine you go to the church service, head on to the reception, you know, you're served some pilau and watermelon, then you listen to some speeches, hand in the gift, and then you head home. On the other hand, we have the office party. Say you're new in the company and you've not really interacted with your colleagues in such a social setup, so you may be a bit uh, anxious and there may be some social anxiety. Solution, a photo booth. A photo booth is the life of the party. A photo booth is a fun, engaging way to just make your guests, you know, let loose, have fun, and mingle. So we set up at your event, your guests hop in, they grab a prop, they strike a pose, and then they get an instant print. The great thing about the print is that it can be custom branded. Company logo, wedding monogram, custom message, where and when uh, the event took place. Um, you can take one picture or a series of two to four pictures with a three-second timer between each picture. You then get your instant print. So, without further ado, kindly step into the booth and let's have some fun. Okay, great. Very, very interesting and a nice experience. We've had a few laughs. <laughs> Thank you. So how much do you charge for being at an event? So we have three packages. We have silver, gold and platinum. For a silver package, it's 16,000 an hour. Uh, for the gold package, it's 14,500 an hour. And for the platinum, it's 12,000 an hour, five plus hours. So 
ideally, the longer you take it, the cheaper it is for you. But with every package, you get a limited number of photos, a limited number of prints, a variety of props, and then the host gets uh, all the soft copies, either on email or USB. Then we have other add-ons, such as a, an enclosure, a closed booth, because some clients like the closed booth. We have the custom branding, uh, a photo book, and uh, of course now the USB. Okay. Then, yeah. How much does this machine cost? Um, machine plus props plus shipping, 900,000. Okay. How many of these do you have? Just one. So how much have you made yet to date since you jumped in? We've done sales of 684,000 and currently at a net profit of 292,000. So, and we've done um, 24 events. You know, that's pretty good because last year, uh, the whole year, we did uh, sales of 810,000 and net of 225,000. Yeah, and the year before, uh, we did 476,000 and 133,000 net. So the, the, the one million really for us to invest in a, you know, a, a better machine, you know, more up to date with a, a better social media integration. Does that mean that when you take the picture, it goes straight to Facebook? Yes. Dangerous. Uh, yeah, but fun. And who else is in the business with you? Uh, just myself and, of course, my assistant, Sam. Um, and where were you working before you jumped into this? <laughs> so I was working in advertising, in client service. So I was doing that um, for five years. So the fact that there's only two of you in the business means that you can only do one event at one time. Yeah, that's my biggest challenge. And especially, like, based on my experience from last year, like the last quarter, you know, I would get double bookings and I wasn't able to meet the demand. I've seen quite a few of these. Mm -hmm. What's the competition landscape like? So currently we are, we are seven in the market and we are all competing for the same market because our pricing is pretty standard uh, because it's a bit of a niche product. And what would your numbers look like mm -hmm. with two units? Like so what are your projections? I should be able to double uh, what I'm making. So I should be able at least by the end of the year to be at, you know, say 1.2, 1.3 in terms of sales. Um, what is the difference since you started uh, being fully present in the business. Mm -hmm. You've done 24 events. Before, you know, I was only limited to weekend events. Now I can do weekday, weekend events. I'm more present in terms of marketing. So I'm very active on social media. On our website, we have a blog and we always make sure, you know, we're working on our SEO to always try and appear at least top five. I'm trying to build partnerships. We have a, a new campaign coming up where you can get a, a wedding film and a free photo booth. So I've partnered with a a filmmaker from Tanzania. In another five years, what's the big picture for this business? So the big picture, I would really want to go regional because Africans were always having parties, you know. So even as I stand here, I know I'm missing a party somewhere. So I'll hopefully, you know, to go regional, but also manufacture, manufacture the booths. I need to be at malls where families spend time. I need to be at churches. I need to be at restaurants, you know. I need to be where, where the merrymakers are. But with my overheads right now. With can the... we see the photos? Yeah, the, yeah I was just going to say. Can, yeah. see the, can we see the photos? Yeah, sure, see sure. the quality? Yeah. yeah, sure. Nyambura, I think what you have is great. I tend to be in a lot of events and there's even a machine where you have to key in your email address before it prints the photo, which is very valuable for clients because then they collect a database. Um, but I like your passion and I like your vision for the event space and for sharing memories. So I'll offer you the one million for 30%. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was nice. Thank you. That was faster than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, you know, would anyone else, you know, come forward with an offer? You remember from my perspective, um, I really enjoy it. I, I love the experience. Uh, I think there's better equipped lines to help you you know, with, 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 with the nature of, 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 of their business, but I'm out. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you for your time. I think for me as an intimate, I don't think it will, it's very viable at this point in time. There's too much competition. Otherwise, I think it's, it's exciting. There's a, there's a space for it. Uh, so I wish you well with the, all of you do sign a deal with her. Thank uh, you. But I'm out. Okay, thank you. Do you want me to be your partner? I would love 
if you are my partner. <laughs> <laughs> Olive has already offered you a million for 30%. Mm -hmm. I don't want to fight with Olive because I think she can give you almost the same thing that I can give you. But well done. Thank you, I appreciate it. I'm out, huh? Okay. <laughs> I'm out. Okay. Can I have a, a think? Did you come in for a specific line, by the way? Okay, to be honest. Yes, I, be honest. I did have uh, somebody in mind. You, you want Joanne to mentor you? Yeah, to mentor me. And then also, <laughs> like. Oh, yeah, Joanne. No, no, not in like a, a way, way. And I really respect you all. Like, absolutely, because I, I also know your work, because I'm from, you know, the same industry. Joanne, also, you have a wealth. Jo Joanne. <laughs> you know, once I say I'm out, I can't go back in. But, you know. Don't worry, we'll pull, we'll pull Joanne in. Don't no worry. worries. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm grateful. <laughs> I know, I haven't finished. Ouch. I haven't finished. <laughs> I'm grateful. And I know you'll bring value. And because of that, I will take the deal. I like to process. Um, I don't like to be excited about things. Okay. So I think I just needed to take it in and, and then just be convicted uh, to take the offer because not everybody is guaranteed an offer. But you know, when, you, when, when it's there, I've seen people surrounding it at events. Oh, yes. I've no, had it at events. It works. Yeah. Hello, Lions. I am Alan Meto, the founder of Maziwa Milele. And I'm Alan Kombai, the co founder of Maziwa Milele. So, we are looking for 500,000 Kenya shillings, discounted at 20%, with an interest of 7.5% per annum. Current per capita milk consumption in Kenya is estimated to be 115 litres, which is projected to 220 litres. This cannot be achieved by the current national average production levels of 5 litres per cow per day. To meet this demand, animal productivity has to be increased significantly. So upon researching, we discovered that the problems ailing the sector were improper feeding, infiltration by quarks, uh, inferior carbon structures, replication of these designs, and poor dairy management at the farm. Our product is a three-in-one package that has an integrated farm management system, carbon design construction, and access to agronomist and veterinary services. Uh, we intend to offer the, the package on a loan basis through interested cooperative societies and bank lenders. Say Chris wants to develop a daily enterprise, right? He'll simply log on to our website, browse to the available modules, and select his preferred modules. He will then be linked to a lender. So as far as the investment goes, 50% uh, of it will go into web and app development. 30% will go into consultancy fees because we have modules that require input by, exper by experts in the industry and the remaining 20% will go into creation of scaled architectural models. You've asked the, for the amount of money. Yes. You've given the interest that you'll pay because of the debt. You've given the percentage discount as well, right? Yeah. But what is, there has to be a maximum cap. So we are going to make an assumption here. So what you're saying, yes. we, at 20% at stake means that the, the valuation cap is 2.5 million. Because five, I'm taking 500 equals 20%, so 100% equals 2.5 million. Yes. Is it okay? Yes. Perfect? Okay, okay. good. Yeah. Now that we have that uh, clarified. So guys, tell me, why convertible with this kind of structure? We are cautious to offer stake because we have not made any sales so far. So we wanted to make the deal enticing to the lions and also not undervalue or overvalue the stake. That's why I came up with the, the application where I'll, I'll, it will be a platform where, I, where the farmhand will now get the opportunity to insert maybe the production of milk a day and maybe a food. Okay. So the data entry is manual? Yeah, yeah it's manual, manual yeah. but you train the farmhand. So the data entry will be manual at the farm, but then you from your comfort, from where you are, from your phone, you can check what is going on at the farm. So what happens if the, the farmhand doesn't enter the data for a day or two? Darshan and Chris have questioned the Maziwa Bilele platform's ability to ensure the farmhands key in the data. Will they convince the Lions that their app can encourage a break from tradition? Lions Den, powered by KCB Bank. Lions Den, powered by KCB Bank. So what happens if the, the farmhand doesn't enter the data for a day or two? Today, maybe this cow can produce, I think, 15 litres a day. So you cannot tell me 
This car will produce tomorrow 14, then the other day will produce 16. So what's the real value of this app and all your technology to the farmer? The app goes beyond record keeping. We also intend to put other modules like vet, uh, vet checks. So it will uh, alert you as the farmer that your cow needs to be checked, for example. So you put in information per cow? Yes. Yeah. What happens if you have 100 cows? Cows. You have so to account for every cow. Part of so you go one by one for each? The, the system is optimized so you can also see the data through our app. So guys, how far have you gone with the development of the app? Have you built anything and you're still, still on paper? That's the reason we are asking for the 500. We have not done any sales. So that, is, that is why we are asking for a convertible debt. So you've not, not even built stick. the user interface, nothing. The Lions are worried that the entrepreneurs haven't finished developing the platform. Will this Maziwa solution turn sour for the lions? Have you put up any of these uh, cow bands yet? I've not put up, but I do have the architectural designs. I'll tell you guys, for me, I'm listening to it, and I think I'm a telephone farmer. So I relate to what you're, the problem you're trying to solve. Because huh? one of the challenges of a farmer is that you have 10 cows, but two of them are eating for free. They don't produce adequate milk. So that's a fact. The second thing is in terms of collating this data. Because farm hands ordinarily, these are guys who don't keep data. You can give them all the templates you want, they don't. So I'm still stuck also on that thing of how you get them to fill in the, the templates and the data. Actually, we are going to the farm hand and according to the requirements that he wants, it's not ours. So we'll go to him and tell him, what do you face when using this? What do you need? So we... But, but you can't customize such a system for every single farm and farm Yeah, hand. you can't. So, okay. Yeah, and you can. <laughs> so in my opinion, I think you should have come to the den when you've done your proof of concept, when you have a product that you say has worked in one farm. I'm out. Thank you. Yeah, okay. I think I concur with all of you. It's still too early for us to, or rather for me to get involved. Still an idea in your head. Uh, clever, but I'm out. You haven't experienced any of the real challenges on the ground yet. But I think you need to come back, yes, when you've done some business, even if it's a little bit of revenue, but I think it's too early and for that reason, I'm out. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dasha. Guys, Alan and Alan, I actually quite like the idea. I like you guys. I think you, you're on to something. Uh, it's still very early. For now, I'm out. Alan and Alan, good ideas in general, but I think you need to tighten, shape them up and tighten them up a bit. I'm ready to help you on getting the app done. Um, and that's for free and not, not, not really uh, charged. Just like my fellow lions have said, too early for an investment. I'm out from an investment perspective, but I'll help you on the technology. They said too much, too soon. What do you think? Yeah, we'd sum it up as that. Okay. But we, we are very grateful for the opportunity. Chris has said that they'll come on board and help us to actually start. So we, we're actually quite happy. Tell me a bit about your passion for technology. My passion in technology is uh, at the age of uh, 11 years. I actually blocked my aunt's phone and I was punished th thoroughly. But after 10 years later, I came up with an innovation at in campus and I felt like it took time for me to become an innovator. So I am so passionate in technology. Hello, Lions. My name is Paul Akwabi, my colleague. Magdalene Kamau, and we are here to introduce to you Tech Kids Africa. Tech Kids Africa is a technology academy for children in Africa, where we nurture the spirit of Silicon Valley to the same children in Africa, between the age of seven to 17 years. We introduce to them robotics, software development, graphic design, web design, life skills, and most of all, creative design thinking, with the intention that they'll be able to create solutions that are tangible to real life situations. We have also designed our own robotic kit that we usually use because this is a bit cumbersome, as you can see, but this is what uh, the kids usually also uh, try to program. Our ask today, uh, the Lions, is five million Kenyan shillings with uh, exchange equity of 20%. I love the fact that you're nurturing young talent. That's really important. How do you charge for your services? We charge a thousand per session. How long is the session? Uh, we, we, work, we have introductory level, middle level, and expert level. 
Each level takes 30 sessions. How long is one session? One session is three hours. And what were your revenues March 2017 to March 2018? Our revenues are 1.6 million. Profit on that? 1.1. You're valuing the business at 25 million shillings. Yeah, sure. Um, you've done, you know, you've had a profit of 1.1 million. Yeah. So it's quite a gap. Even if you were to take a multiple of 10, you only come to about 11 million shillings. Uh, okay. This, first of all, because of the networks that we have created, uh, the investment that we have won, not in cash, but in monetary investment. What exactly do you want to do with the 5 million? We want to buy equipment. The mobile computer lab moving from one school to another. So we'll need around 50 to 100 laptops coming to that. We need to print our circuit boards so that we also sell at the same time, use them in our own uh, local trainings. So tell me, of the 1.6 million that you raised between uh, now and, and January, yeah. how, just give me a breakdown of how much of that through the expo, through sponsors, through fees? Through expo, we raised uh, around five, uh, 560,000. Uh -huh. Then uh, one, 1 1.04 uh, uh, through the trainings. Isn't the expo a more viable option to invest than putting classes out there? Uh, in the expo, we uh, exhibit the kids that we have trained are the ones who are exhibiting the products that they have come up with. So we train the kids with an intention of them coming up with a tangible product. So is, is the strategy to sign up more schools where you and do the training or do have more camps and events? So our goal and our strategy is to sign more schools, actually, uh, about having different camps. We only plan to have Nairobi and maybe uh, Mombasa. Is it more like a hobby or a passion? Because if I was to employ somebody who has robotics or, or, or I needed somebody you know, who had uh, the qualification in robotics, I would still need them to go to uni and get to university and get a, a degree. For a long time, we've seen university students developing websites. Now, in our academy, we actually have one child who's completed a website and is working on more, and he earned from it. What did that teach us? Could we be delaying our children for something that they're already interested in? Definitely. We are. I think you're definitely on trend because right now everyone is focusing on children. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yes. I've exactly. seen 14-year-olds create websites as well. Exactly. So I think it's definitely a great space that you're in. Um, when you're looking for business mentorship and you want people to come and hang out with the kids, please do look for me. I'd be happy to be a part of it, right? Thank you. Um, but as in, an investor, I have to say I'm out. I think, okay, I understand you're trying to bring some practical application to the theory they also learn. But with specialized roles, uh, like for example, the ones that we need, say within you know our companies, we actually need hands-on experience. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm, I'm seeing the traction to be a little bit of a problem because if somebody has already decided which area they want to go into, they will want to learn specifically about that area. So I'm seeing, okay, I could be completely wrong here. It's, it, I, I see it more as a hobby of somebody who's trying to get into another field. For that reason, I'm out. Uh, guys, I totally believe in what you're trying to do. It's, it's similar to going to play soccer. Uh, my concern is, is, especially in Nairobi, there's more than 15 of these academies running. My kids are in three separate ones, as we speak, you know? So I don't feel your proposition is very strong and unique. So for me, I think the future is in exposes. Uh, but with the model of training, I think it's highly competitive. And uh, for that reason, I'm out. For me, I don't really play in the education space. So I can only say I really admire what you're doing and I really wish you the very best, but I'm out. Thank, Thank you. you. Nairobi is highly competitive. I'd say first focus on Mombasa, grow your brand there, because Nairobi does have three uh, similar tech type of um, brands. Um, because of the business model and your go-to-market, I feel that you are better off growing organically. Unfortunately, I'm out. But if you need any help in terms of thinking through on the strategy, uh, please do reach out. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. We have taken everything positive uh, because uh, even being among the selected, we understand it is an effort. And also the advice they have given, I think it's worthwhile. Now you're about to face the lions. What emotions are you going through right now? I'm a bit nervous, but at the same time, I'm really excited. Hello, Lions. My name is Hajila Kimeria. 
and I am the owner and the creative director of Quetoto Designs Limited. We are an art, craft, and jewelry design company. And today I am here to seek a 1.2 million shilling investment for 25% of the company. We specialize in jewelry, art, artwork, crafts for the home, decor, and office. In the past two years of operation, our revenues have been roughly 600,000 to 800,000 Kenya shillings, and our net profits have been 180,000 to 250,000 Kenya shillings, respectively. We currently have a large order to export products to Japan and are seeking a capital investment to help us complete the order. I would like to at least hire at least two more staff and move to a bigger space where we can display all our lovely products and store them in an efficient way. A second thing we'd like to do is to develop a better marketing strategy by creating a professional logo, a website, and even packaging for the products. So you have a large order from Japan. How large is this large? Translates to about 350,000 Kenya shillings, and these are 700 pieces of jewelry. Okay, and what's the margin on that? Uh, roughly about 30%. How much demand is there outside for what it is that you're doing? There's a large demand. The thing is, okay, the market is competitive, but the good thing about the fashion industry, people go after, say, your brand and what you stand for. Do you have an e-commerce website? No, we don't. Do you see a majority of your sales coming in from overseas or local? Overseas. By, overseas. by a big margin? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, Hajila, now this order to Japan, yes. you did 350000 Yes. Or it's worth 350000 Yes. So what you actually need because the profit margin is going to be about, what, 100000 mm -hmm. So you need about 250000 If you don't get money in the day, how are you going to finance it? We have been working at a really slow pace, which is why it takes even longer to complete the order. So we'll just continue working at our pace. With the customer base increasing, that revenue is helping us to grow, but it's just a much slower pace. Like there's so much more we could do with just a little push. In my opinion, if I look at everything that you have, I would, there's so much going on in the jewelry space. I'll probably suggest that you focus a lot on the paintings because they're really unique. Because really what we're buying into at that 25% is your talent and your skills. I don't think you should sell your talent at this early stage. I'm not going to invest in your business, but what I will offer you is to help you develop your brand, Koitoto. Thank you. So, as an investor, I'm out. Angela, for me, I think, yeah, you're right. You know, the market is out there. You know, the world is out there. Um, I just think, you know, like, with, with, with what you need out there with the export markets, you need a pretty specific set of skills, network, um, and I think that's only something you can develop and maybe with the help of, you know, um, some of the lines here, you'd be able to develop it. So I'm going to say I'm out. Thank you. I think since you already have the orders, there's other ways of financing them. There's LPO financing, there's discounting of LPOs, so I'm out. Thanks. Um, so I'd really like to see how I can support you beyond um, cash. But I'll, I'll, all in all, I think I'll bail out. Okay, thank you. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> how about you, Joanne? Oh, Ajila. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm also out because mm -hmm. I don't think you need me. That this, I don't think this is the right time. Mm -hmm. I think right now you can find easier ways in the short term for you to get the money to invest and then thereafter sell when your business has grown. Because what you're selling is really your sweat capital and you know, your talent. And you're very, very talented and very gifted. I'm really excited that I actually went through this. It's given me a lot of exposure, even confidence. So I think I've gained a lot. Lion's Den, powered by KCB Bank. Lion's Den, powered by KCB Bank. Welcome to KCB Lion's Den. Thank you. What qualities do you have that make you think that you are an excellent businessman? I love connecting people. 
Uh, I have thrived in marketing in, uh, in my previous jobs and I'm confident I can make a good sale for this business. Hello Lions, my name is John Kamau. I am a marketer and an early childhood specialist. Hello Lions, my name is Maina Kiruri. I've been in this industry of motorcycles for about five years now. We are thrilled to invite you investment of a million shillings for an equity of 20% in Peaky Empire. Peaky Empire is, uh, is in the business of flight man fleet management and upkeep. What we do is that we manage the fleets for corporate to make them concentrate on their core business. Uh, according to the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, last year, for the first nine months, uh, we, the new motorbikes registered in the country were 164,000. That was an increase of 60% as uh, pre compared to the previous year. People are gradually moving into using motorbikes because they're more efficient, they're more effective in transporting goods and services. And the corporates have not been left behind. In the last uh, seven months that we've been in business, we've grossed about 300,000 every single month. We are looking forward to jumping up with this, with your support, to about 600,000 to 700,000 every single month. We want to do a call center. Our call center will involve picking calls for rescue from the client. We will also, uh, we'll also be able to track the bikes for the client. At the same center, we'll be able to find out and be able to give a customer a report of how long the bike has gone without service, if that is the case. Shall we tell them about our plan? Oh. I think we should. We intend to recruit you all into the bike into biking community. Yes. And at the same time, get us to manage your fleet. Yeah. Hi John and Mina. Hi. How exactly do you make money from your clients? Our clients are busy people, as in if it's the food industry, like the one that we have, our major client at the same, at this time. What they do is that they do deliveries to their clients. One of the problems is that bikes tend to break down. So when the bike breaks down and you're waiting for your pizza, it has to be delivered in time. And that's when we receive the call. So you have to come and rescue that bike. So you do bike rescue? How else do you generate money? Bikes rescue, service and repairs. And what do you charge? We don't charge our clients to rescue their bikes because they're already our clients. Okay. So we are repairing that bike. What's the average? Amount of money you make? A thousand, a thousand shillings per repair. Are your clients, do they put you on a retainer? No. You know, what we have is that we have, co uh, we have contracts with our clients. Yes. They don't pay your flat rate every month? No, mm -hmm. no. It depends with the, the job done. They pay per job. What happens if they cannot repair it on the spot? We, we carry the bike yes. to our garage. How do you do it? We, we, have, we use a truck. Tell us, how many people do you have in the business? At the moment, we have five mechanics. Two are on pay, okay, three are on contract. Full-fledged workshop? Yes, we do. Yes. Where, where is it located? We have actually three workshops. We have one at the CBD, we have one at Ngara, and we have one at uh, Kino. Now, what is it that is preventing you from actually scaling up? The limitations are simple, mm -hmm. resources. What is resources? Right now, when a customer calls, they call our line. They call your they personal call mobile me. number? Yes. If they can't get us, we have one mechanic that is on standby for that. Now, what we want to do is set up a center, whereby when you call and you have a problem, mm -hmm. they'll respond immediately. They'll okay. know this mechanic is mm -hmm. on standby at this place. In the time that you have been doing this, what challenges have you encountered? What is the major challenge? Having enough spares for the, for the bikes. Mm -hmm. Now, just tell me, you listed a couple of services you offer for the bike owners. You said you, you repair, you track, what else do you do? Uh -huh. We repair and we service. Uh -huh. We want to order, we want to order on the aspect of tracking because the, tra the tracking comes with the, the center. So it's not, ha it's not happening yet? It's not happening yet. Yeah, we don't have that capacity at the moment. Why can't you just simply put, buy a seat at an existing call center so that you advertise a number, people call there, and they can tell you where the bike is, as opposed to you having to put it all together. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. But we need a software also that can manage the bike, as in it records what happened. But it can be outsourced. Yeah. Ah, it's a good idea to explore. Have to we haven't yourself. explored that, yeah. What are your profit margins? Right now, we are, we're making an average of 100,000 per month. Mm -hmm. So about 33%. Yes, yes. What are the challenges that are making you feel that you want to hold your own stock? If in case one of our mechanics is en route and then gets another call to head to another direction, they are having to go to town to pick stuff and then move to the other location. But the idea would be they should 
turn immediately and run to the rescue. Will the one million shillings be enough for all these things you want to do? We, it's a start. It's a start. Uh, we, have, we, are, we are being realistic in our mathematics. We have done this. We had a bigger budget, but we have had to scale down uh, based on our valuation. Yeah? We run a big fleet, so we, we, we buy a lot of these as well. But we buy them brand new, and we often get a warranty period. So who is your real time? Is it, is it, is it second-hand bikes? Is it new bikes? Actually, you are the target market. Okay. Because for one, when you get the warranty for the two years, you only get the warranty on the engine. So hopefully that the engine does not break down in the two years, and hopefully that you do dispose of your bikes in the two years period. If it goes beyond the two years period, you have to service the bike. Another problem with the bikes in Nairobi, accidents. Accidents are not covered in the warranty. So yes. would a border border rider be a client of yours? It's, a, it's not the target market we are looking at. Today, let's look at the big bikes out in the market. Yes. Sendi, Jumia, Java. Mm -hmm. Those fleets, they are already being serviced. Mm -hmm. So who's doing it today? The, the, the same Jiwakali mechanics. And that's why you're bringing a different service. Because all, all the, like you, you mentioned, Sendi and the rest are tired of being told bike A has broken down and they have no report. John and Minor. Yes. yes. I think what you've done is quite ingenious. You don't need to bring in an investor. I think you're good on your own. Um, I think just keep doing what you're doing and grow the business. I'm out. John and Mina, I've got a question. Yes. Is, do you have a need other than money from the Lions? Yes. Yes. That's what I want you to tell us. Yes. First of all, your bikes. We can do a good job with your bikes. Okay, that's yes. one. And that's okay. easy. Secondly, the networks. Uh, we appreciate that you ha you're thriving in your own fields. And that, that is exciting to us. Our mentorship and networking is priceless to us. I like you guys. I think you know what you're doing. Uh -huh. So I'm willing to make you an offer. All right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I can give you one million for 25%. <sighs> okay, so I like you guys. I, I, I think there's a clear need for this. I'm not quite sure exactly what the business is going to expand. Um, but because sort of I'm just not able to see other revenue streams, like clearly in my mind, I'm out. Thank okay. you. I like your energy. I like your passion. I like the way you've thought through what it is you can offer. Bikes are not about to reduce but increase. So I'm in one million, 25%. Hmm. So really Guys, I think you asked for 1 million for 20%. 20%, yes. Isn't it? Huh? Yes. For me, I'm ready to come in at 1 million for 20%. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, part of the reason why I'm interested in this very much mm -hmm. is because I already am in the process of setting up a location that will be dealing with uh, motor vehicles and such. Mm -hmm. And it's a big central location. Mm -hmm. I also happen to have a sibling who's an expert in this area. Mm -hmm. So I know in as much as I'll be flying blind, I have somebody to help me. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested, 1 million, 20%. Mm -hmm. With three lions offering a deal for Picky Empire, the entrepreneurs have a tough decision to make. Who will drive away with this business? So guys, before you speak, let me just make a counter offer. Okay. <laughs> All right? All right. And I think we probably might come in together with Chris on this one. Eh? We already have a tracking system for bikes, which we did last year. We already have a call center that's up and running already. Uh -huh. We already have a fleet of bikes we already we own ourselves. Yeah, so think very carefully before you talk to Joanne. We bought a tracking company in season one with Mike. Yes. It's going very well, like you said. Um, I think our interest is around building the back-end technology that will help you market yourself well. We believe we'll make good partners. Think about it. Buy it at 1 million for 20% and I'll let go. But if you're going to be getting 25%, I'm hanging in there. But there's two no, lions here, yeah, man. It's about the value we are putting <laughs> exactly. on the table. I'm giving equal value, if not more. No, Understood, no, no. it's two lions. Uh, no. <laughs> All right, we have an offer for you. What we had asked for, 1M, was, as we had uh, explained earlier, to upscale our services uh, to serve our clients better. But we have a plan to increase 
more clients so we can make much more money. If we could invest much more, I, I've done the maths. We only did this 1M because uh, to start small, but if you have a bigger ambition, you can invest more. For 25%, we can ask for that you invest a little more than an M and we can take 25%. How much more? Uh, 1.5. 20% yes. for 1 million means that each 5% was going for 250,000. So this one has already gone at a premium. Meaning 25% should be 1.25. Should be 1.25. It can be 1.5. Yeah. Mm. So uh, 1.5 is for 30%. Uh -huh. If you use the same valuation. Yes. You get what uh, I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. I okay. understand. Yes. Think. No hmm. rush. All right, uh, we have a, an idea. Look, this business, we, we would like, we would like um, to open our doors for more than one lion. You can all come in, uh, but invest a million each. <laughs> <laughs> your, your ideas are interesting. The, this is the mathematics. You came uh -huh. in one million for 20, which means every 10% is 500. If you want 30%, that's 1.5. That's the valuation you brought in, which is not an issue. Okay. You have two offers. You have one offer, which is one lion, exactly what you asked for, 1 million, 20%. Clean deal. You have a second offer, which says two lions for 25%, 1 million. We are choosing to go with two. The idea is to maximize, to maximize uh, the You're a smart guy. Yes? You're a smart guy. <laughs> Chris. Uh, I understand that Joan will eventually... Yes, yeah, she's going to join. investing in the industry. So she does not have a choice, <laughs> per se. You are welcome. Yes. She's in. She's <laughs> in. But for the two of you, we will hold your hand. We will guide you through it. Uh, we are maximizing on the, on the networking. And we already have Joan. No, we I'm know. very happy. I think you made the right decision. <laughs> These guys know what they're doing. Oh, I can you. help you only this far. These guys are already steps ahead. Yeah. So that's a smart decision. Are you sure you made the right decision there? Yes. Completely choosing two lions instead of just focusing on just one? Yes. yes. Maximizing the networks. Uh -huh. That's and what we are looking for. Yeah. And the experience. Yeah. And what they hold already. Yes. Okay. Yeah, what we are looking for. Now, you see the valuation is nowhere at that point. Uh, it's just numbers. <laughs> no, it was 10 million at that point. The valuation. One, one million for 10 percent. Yes, but you straight. see, the value had gone up straight away by the interest that had been expressed. Yeah. Excellent. Right, good. Even with some unusual Chinese mathematics, John Kamau still manages to seal the deal with Chris and Mike, leaving Joanne feeling a little left out. That wraps up another exciting edition of KCB Lion's Den, with two more successful pitches and investments totaling a further two million shillings. Be sure to follow the conversation on Twitter and Facebook. Hashtag KCB Lions Den. Thank you.